G'day fellas and people from the interwebs, I'm your host for this tutorial, DJ Ignite. I'm not really a DJ, but neither are you, so let's just get stuck into it, shall we? Now, uh, a commenter on my Vocodex tutorial asked if I could do a tutorial on routing. So, here we are. Firstly, what is routing? Well, simply put, routing is where we get a sample, like a kick or, you know, a sound that you've recorded, or an instrument, like a plug-in, and you assign it to a mixer track or route it to a mixer track and from there you can accomplish many different cool things. So when you open up FL Studio by default you get a kick, a clap, a hat and a snare and even if you open up an instrument or whatever you always get this little uh, options window thing open up here. And the reason for this being is not only does it have some basic functions that you can change that are common throughout, regardless of the plugin, um, but you can also route it from this window. So in the top right hand corner here you can see this little FX window which says 1 and in clap it says 2 and in hats it says 3 and in snare it says 4. That's because these four are automatically routed for you by default when you open up a new project. And what this corresponds to is the mixer track that it is routed to. So if I put it to double dash which is just straight out when I play a sound of the kick the sound uh, the kick only goes to the master and then straight out if it's in mixer track or FX track 1 it is routed to the first track which is then sent as you can see these little icons here it is sent to the master and then out again 3xOSC is a plugin that I just opened, so I'm going to move it down. And you can, and by default, every plugin that you open isn't routed to a track. So shut up. So we're going to use our scroll wheel, or we can hold down the mouse, the left mouse button, and move our mouse up and down to select which track. And this goes all the way up to 99, by the way. Now we know that one through four are already used, so we're going to put it on six, actually. And why am I doing this? Well, we'll find out in just a moment, won't we? Um, okay, cool. So, 3XOSC is now routed to number 6. Isn't that amazing? And we've got 1, 2, 3, and 4 already set up for us. So, just so things are a bit neater, instead of these saying insert whatever, I'm going to rename them just so I can identify them a bit easier. To rename, you just click on one to select it and press F2. And then it brings up this nice little window. So I'm going to call this kick. And I'm going to rename it to a dark. I mean recolor it to a dark color. And all my percussion instruments will be the same color. So they're easier, much easier to identify at a glance. And I'm just going to go along and do them all. Now I gave 3XOSC or routed 3XOSC to insert 6. Number five, I always have a crash. I don't route my crashes to where the hats are. So I always give my crash and other symbols their own mixer track. And here is 3x OSC. And this is going to be the baseline. So I'm going to call it 3x OSC so I know what plugin it is. And we'll roll it for filling. And this also will get its own color coordination. Whoa, that's two. Bloody hell. Can't have, can't have a, an inferior bloody plugin, jeez. But yeah, so if I ever decide to have another 3XOSC, I can just do the exact same thing. Call it that, but you know, a lead roll, a lead roll, lead, not lead. And it has its own color coordination. Amazing! I, oh, I was pretty sure you could just delete them, but you can't. How about that? Okay, so now that it's routed and everything's nice and neat, we need to do something. So what is one of the most basic things that people like to do with routing is side chaining. And to show you exactly what side chaining is, I need to set some things up. So 3XOSC is going to be using a preset called Nice. You don't you won't have that because it's a preset that I made. 
and I'm also going to tweak something real quick just so it sounds nice. <laughs> That'll do. Alright, so there's our pattern one, three XOSCs playing some notes. I'm going to place it in the playlist. If you don't know what that is, look it up, because I can't, I'm not really going to explain the playlist to you, but it, essentially it's where you put all your patterns together to construct your song. I'm going to select another pattern and place our kick, and place that in the playlist as well. So when I play them together, to make it shit. There we go. Awesome. Now, it kicks a little bit quiet because the bass line in this is a bit overpowering. So, we're going to sidechain. Now, the kick's going straight to the master, but what we want to do is send it to 3XOSC bass. However, you can see the sound from kick is also going to 3x OSC bass and sending to the master output as well so we've got two of the same thing which we don't want we want to turn this volume down so the kick sound the sound itself isn't sent through but it is still routed so it could be used as a trigger point now we can also do this just by right clicking on this and saying side chain to this track or to this track only or route to this track only now that it's routed or side-chained, we need to open up a limiter of some sort. Enable the side-chaining. You cannot enable it unless you have something side-chained to the track. And then from here, well, just have a listen. If I turn on the instrument. <laughs> about that so the pictures the, the little, little diagram majiggy <laughs> diagram oh fuck the waveform I guess you could call it on here is pretty obvious as to what it's doing it's using the trigger point here which is that blue wave line and it's using these different loudness settings threshold ratio and knee to cut off the bass line so we get a nice side chaining effect. We can also cheat uh, by not doing it the proper way and just use an external effect such as gross beat to achieve side chaining like this, which is just muting on its own. So if I turned off the limiter so it's not side chaining at all, it sounds pretty much the same. However, what's not good about using this method is if you decide to change your kicks a bit. like that. Whereas if you've got true side chaining going, see that extra bit? Yeah. And that's where these controls come in handy. You can fine tune just how it reacts to it. And you don't have to do it with a kick and bass line. You can do it with vocals over the top of the rest of the song, which brings me to my next point groups and grouping things so well grouping what is grouping well we've already grouped a bunch of compassion percussion instruments or samples these are and what if there is some things that I want to change about them that is similar throughout all of them instead of opening up say a reverb in every single one, which chews up system resources as well, having multiple instances of the same thing. 
what you can do is you can route groups of things to a send slot. Now you've only, you're only given four of them so you need to use them sparingly obviously but instead of sending everything to the master you can just send it straight to there. Whoops I didn't mean to do that because I turned that off. There we go. So I can go route to this only which turns off the master and sends it to send number one. And I'm going to do it for all of them. So now all of these are being sent to send slot one or routed to send slot one and then from here to the master. Well, why would we do that? Well, just like what I said. So we can do a reverb. Instead of selecting or putting a reverb in every single one, chewing up system resources, we can just send them all to the same place, use one reverb to achieve the same effect. But of course that does affect the end result of your sound somewhat. But some people like the effect, some people don't. It comes down to your own personal tastes. And this obviously isn't going to be complete without some other stuff. Um, yeah, no, that's cool. Well, it's not cool, it's shit, but you get my idea. But yeah, I don't even think that. Yeah, no, I did. Cool, so all of them are being routed to send one, which I can also rename to. might do that in capitals percussion send and this is actually what I've done in a lot of my previous songs for my vocals I'll have a vocal send for all of them because I like to screw around with my vocals a lot and that's just the things that I do so yeah group sends you can also do this with instruments as well obviously so if I have citrus and I have a Hama, and I have a Sakura, and just so I'm not biased to image line, FM8. There we go. So there's all my plugins set up. Well, not really set up. FM8, there's this window, similar window that I was telling you about. FM8 is 7, Sakura can be 8. Armour can be 9, and Citrus can be 10. So we've got FM81. I call them 1 because it's the first one. Cool. Oh, they're not colour coordinated, but that doesn't really matter. So all the outputs. going straight to the master and out again. But I can also send it to the percussion one if I want to, which will give it its reverb. I can also open up a parametric equalizer and kill off all the high sounds like the hats normally have really high frequency. Shit. I really hate the sound of those default drum sounds, percussion sounds, sorry. I apologise. You've probably all heard them many, many times, and you've probably all tried to make songs with them, as have I, many, many times. Um, and multiple grouping. Well, I don't really know what the hell I meant by multiple grouping when I wrote that down in my notepad, so I'm assuming that I've already covered it. Uh, let me think for one moment. Okay, and now we're going to have a quick look at how I've utilised routing myself in my latest song, Solitude. So, yeah, this is Solitude right here and all of its entirety. Amazing! And straight away you can see that the kick's being used to sidechain the piano and Harmer 1, as well as the Citrus dub. 
but also way over here we've got a send that's being utilized just for the side training of the kick all on its own so all these other instruments like yeah these harmers in here and any other instrument that I want to have side chain to the kick instead of adding a limiter into it even though some of these do have a limiter but things like these harmers here don't have limiters here I can just send them straight to here and this limiter will side chain it all for me and it'll all side chain the exact same no matter what instrument and to the same level I think it should I'm pretty sure it should <laughs> other bit of routing I've done is for the vocals so you can see here that I've used one mixer track well I didn't mean to move all the way that far one mixer track here which is just for the vocals insert and from here I can add in I don't know if I should play that <laughs> I don't know if it's embarrassing or not ah let's risk it anyways if I can envision uh. all of my dreams and you can hear Bear, my dog. I wouldn't need scratching himself in the background. <laughs> Funny. Um, yeah, so one insert all on its own for an Edison to record vocals input, Newton to clean up the tones a bit, and then they're sent to their well, their own sample is made and then their own track. Or a bunch of them is sent to the same one. Yeah, so all of these are sent routed to 25, that's 24, that's nothing. They're automations. So yeah, pretty much everything, almost everything in here, in the sequencer, uh, has its own mixer track assigned to it. If not, it's got, you know, two or three or four of them routed to the same one. And they're grouped together that way. But yeah, I think that comes to the end of our routing tutorial. Routing is very handy. Um, obviously, the most basic reason for routing is just so you can give it its own track and then give it its own effects. But yeah, thanks for watching and uh, hope you learned something. Hey, take it easy, guys. Farewell for now.